Okay, people, this next question is from Tumi. I'm, gonna, I'm really going to go fast, so you, you have to just listen carefully, all right? If you get a question about speciation, because that's what this is about, speciation, okay? It doesn't matter what the animal is, okay? doesn't matter. It can be chickens. It can be birds. It can be <coughs> monkeys. It can be any animal. You take your pick. It does not matter. What are we doing? We're looking at the distribution of a camel family in this case on different continents. Okay, so what separates them if they're on different continents? You're going to have land and sea. Okay, now the arrows indicate the current distribution of the animals. So here we've got the dromedary, we've got the Bactrian, and we've got the llama. Doesn't matter. They could have been tortoises. It doesn't matter. Okay, so it says, explain how speciation of the camels may have occurred. So what I'm going to give you now, it doesn't matter what animal it is. This is the process you are going to follow. Number one, you are going to say, the um, original population... Um, in this case, be camel population. In, the original population was separated by um, the sea or the, the, the um, mountains or what, the desert, doesn't matter. It was separated by the sea due to continental drift into, in this case, three different populations. Okay, so what have we got? We've got the original population is to separated in some way into different populations. That's number one. Okay. Um, so, number two, or point two. Look, you're not supposed to number things like this. I'm numbering it so you can learn it this way. Okay. There was no gene flow. Okay. So, they were not mating. They, they separated. They're on, on different areas. So, there was no gene flow between the populations. Right, so no gene flow, full stop. Number three, each population was exposed to different um, environmental conditions. Okay, that's very important. And that is your selection pressure. Remember just now when we did the, the comparison uh, between artificial and natural selection? Where your selection force is the environmental, uh, is the environment, is the natural environment. That is your selection force. This is your selection force here and it's going to cause pressure. All right, then number four, or point number four, natural selection occurs a man occurs independently you see I was thinking of all the e's in independently and I write an e at the end of occurs independently in each population all right okay so, natural selection occurs independently in each population. Um, number five, the individuals in each population become um, genotypically, in other words, in their genes, and phenotypically 
in what you see in their appearance um, uh, uh, different from each other. Okay? And then point six, we say even when or if the populations um, were to be mixed again, they would not be able to interbreed, but don't stop there and produce fertile offspring. Okay, so let's go back. Here are your important things that you have to, have to, have to put in. Okay, I'm going to put it in red. Okay, the original species separates. Why? The sea, a mountain, doesn't matter. And that it splits them into different populations. So you've got one that splits into different populations. Okay? Then, there was no gene flow. In other words, they can't mate with each other. So the genes can't flow through them. Okay? Each population is exposed to different environmental conditions. Very important. We talk about them, that they're different because they're living in different areas. Okay, then natural selection occurs independently. So this group have natural selection and that one. So A and B, and in this case, the three lots of camels, there would be C. Doesn't matter. But each one is in a different area. They each have different uh, natural selection happening. Okay, then the individuals in each population become genotypically, their genes, and phenotypically, physically different from each other. This is the important thing. They don't look like each other and, they don't, and their genes are different. And it's because their genes are different that they are physically different. And then when the populations are mixed again, they are unable to interbreed because they cannot produce fertile offspring. In order for, for two organisms to be uh, able to interbreed, okay, that's fine. You get a horse and a donkey can interbreed, but occasionally. But they produce a mule which is unable to, to pass on that gene. There's, there'll be no more gene flow. It stops right there. So an animal, in order for, for a, um, a species to be the same, they must be able to interbreed and produce Fertile offspring, so for offspring that can pass those genes on to the next generation. So there is a gene flow. Okay, people, those are your six points. If you learn what I've told you now, you've got six marks in the bag. Boom, thank you for coming.